What's up, people of YouTube? This is Grow Me Something Mr. Welcome to Bright Idea Gardens. This video presentation is for expert advice on growing brassicas, in particular broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. I'll take you from preparing the beds through harvest and freezer storage. I'm in South Louisiana Zone 9A, but this information will be the same if you're in a more northern climate. You just need to protect the plants by means of a greenhouse or a hoop house. Uh, I've got my list here of things uh, to read off to you. Uh, because I don't want to take a chance and forget anything in my own garden. If I forget something, I can fix it uh, right away. But for y'all, I want to make sure I give every bit of information so I'll be having a, a list to read from. Uh, I've got 10 major points uh, to provide to y'all for growing and harvesting amazing garden goodies. The first one is that brassicas are best grown as a fall crop, where the temperatures are between 40 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It's my experience that they need warm temperatures in the low to mid 70s to grow up in size before the colder weather sets in. They'll mature and form their heads or crowns as the cold weather sets in. Broccoli usually matures first near the end of November, then cauliflower and cabbage several weeks later in December and beyond. Of course, it's possible to have a mixed harvest in November and December for either cauliflower or the broccoli. Cabbage usually is uh, later in December and January. It's possible to grow in northern climates because they're cold tolerant but you need to protect them like Deborah Christmas does by using a greenhouse. She's heated her greenhouse with string lights and with uh, candles. If you don't want to build a greenhouse, you can build a simple hoop house, which is like a greenhouse but built right over your garden beds. There are multiple methods to heat each of these structures. The second major point and the first step really before wanting to put together a fall garden is to get your soil tested if you haven't gotten one already. At a minimum, it will tell you the levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in addition to the pH level. Some will provide calcium and other mineral levels. You will know what fertilizers, if any, are needed and if you need to make your soil more or less acidic. Number three. Most vegetables like slightly acidic soil. Base level is seven and for brassicas to grow at their best, they need a pH between 5.5 and 6.5. There are a number of things you can do to make the soil more or less acidic, but be aware that some options take longer to affect soil change. For efficiency of this video, look online for methods and products to change your pH either up or down. Next is you want to prepare your garden weeks in advance of planting. For me, that's mid-September planting. You would want to remove old or barely producing plants and bury them or put them in compost. This will get buried uh, instead of putting them in compost because it's pretty much broken down and not even in the soil right now. So. Brassica is like a balanced fertilizer, meaning 10-10-10, 8 8 triple 13 whatever. It's up to you if you want to use organic fertilizers or not. My soil, for example, is very low in nitrogen and very high in phosphorus and potassium. So I focus on adding nitrogen-only fertilizers. Based on your soil test, rake in the nutrient components you may be lacking. I suggest slow release fertilizers that can feed for five to eight weeks at a time or longer. This will give time for the fertilizer to break down and be available before you plant. Granular fertilizer needs the heat of the soil and water in order to activate. I like to use a metal rake to get things lined up not with the tines down but with the tines up if you need to break through the soil tines down but otherwise leveling i like to use the tines up i already put in fertilizer for this it's already nicely composted so i just like to level things out top coat with compost or mix in the compost when you add the fertilizer remember that a living soil makes the fertilizer more available to the plant's roots Buy starter plants from a local plant nursery or garden center if possible. Usually they carry varieties that are suited to your area as well as generic varieties and they're probably closer to your garden center than where the big stores get their plants from. Buying seeds are a whole lot cheaper but consider the time, effort and setup needed to germinate seeds. I'm not set up with heat mats, grow lights, etc. to properly operate. Consider trading some of your harvest with your supplier to reduce costs. 
I've done it and I continue to do, the, to do that. I'll get um, several of these uh, at no cost and uh, in return I just bring them some of what I harvest. It works out well for both of us. As of this filming, a four pack of starter plants from local suppliers range between $1.79 and $1.99, which is much cheaper than buying from the big stores. Lay out your garden in a uniform manner, with plants being at least 15 inches apart. Before all this took place, I have a hand drawn map. As you can see right there, I have uh, how many plants, which bed. Some of these other ones here, there's no numbers because that's all from seed right there. The 15 to 18, 12 to 15, that is from starter plants right there. Okay, once we're set up like this, I like to take each of the starter plants, pull them out the, the container here, lay them on top equidistantly. The smaller starter plants, I like to put those on the outside so that they avoid getting uh, choked out or suppressed from the larger plants as they grow up. Dig holes for each plant and tease the roots before putting them in the ground. Plant them as deep as the soil level of your seedlings or starters, or a little bit deeper, but not by much. So there's a natural soil level uh, when they uh, sow the seeds in the, for the starter plants. It's at that level or slightly deeper that you want to go in the ground. Do not treat these like tomatoes where you're going to bury two-thirds of the plant into the soil. The plants need at least six hours of sunlight. Water them in. Keep them slightly moist. Do not allow the soil to dry out entirely throughout the season. Next big point is to fertilize the plants two weeks after they've been transplanted in the ground or in your containers with a quick release liquid fertilizer that has a bit more nitrogen than phosphorus and potassium. I like to use an organic fish emulsion that has an NPK of 511. This gives the plant a boost of nitrogen in addition to microorganisms. Make worm casting tea or compost tea and feed the plants every three weeks or so after transplant. Depending on your soil test, you may want to introduce another round of slow release granular fertilizer or a nearly balanced liquid fertilizer seven or eight weeks after you transplant. Remember that in general, the larger the plant, the larger the head of broccoli, cauliflower, or cabbage will be. This is why I give them a shot of fish emulsion early on. Since cabbage is mostly greens, I would tend to give them a little extra depending on what they're looking like. I don't want to waste or over fertilize them. Cauliflower needs to be blanched in order to protect them from sun scorch and to keep their white color. Once the cauliflower are exposed from their baby leaves, Blanch the cauliflower by bringing the leaves together to form a shield of sorts and secure with string, rubber bands, velcro, etc. I have even covered the cauliflower with some of the cut leaves to keep them from direct sunlight. So now the part you've all been waiting for. When are they ready to harvest? How large will they get? Broccoli can be harvested young, but if you want to harvest them when they're at their largest and best, look for the heads to start loosening up. If they're flowering, then you've waited too long. I hear they're still edible but they're not the best tasting. Cut the broccoli down to the first set of major leaves. Leave the plant in the ground as it will produce side shoots and additional broccoli florets as I call them. Harvest cauliflower at their largest and best when their heads tighten up and are firm. Cut a few inches below the cauliflower. If you're going to give these to someone, do not cut off the surrounding leaves. Cut the tops off the leaves, still keeping the cauliflower protected. Cauliflower do not produce additional shoots the way broccoli does, so you can pull the plant out the soil now or at a later time. Cabbages should be harvested when they're as large as they'll get before splitting. Feel the head of cabbage. It should be firm and the leaves taut like a drum. Sometimes you may see the outer leaves start to rip or peel back. If the cabbage is split open in half or in thirds, you've waited too long. Cut the cabbage several inches below the head and pull up the plant or leave it in the soil to pull out later. Number 10. Now that you made your harvest, you can eat them fresh or freeze for later. All three of these vegetables can be frozen for later use. While it's possible to break them down and freeze as is, it's best to blanch them for up to three minutes in salted boiling water first. That kills most bacteria and reduces enzymatic action. Break down the cauliflower and broccoli into the floret size of your choice and wash before blanching. After blanching, submerge them in cold water to stop the cooking process. Allow them to drain and pat dry. Place on a cookie tray or cooling rack and stick them in the freezer to start freezing. When they appear to be iced over, place them in a container or freezer bag as individual florets. That way when you want to cook all or some of them, you're not defrosting a block. They'll be closer to the way you can buy them in the stores. Break down the cabbage by removing the large outer leaves and any of the tight leaves that are damaged by bugs. 
then cut into quarters and wash. Blanch the cabbage with the core portion attached. This makes it easier to handle each of the quarters. Perform the same post blanch actions as it was described for broccoli and cauliflower. There you have it, a 10 point guide to growing and harvesting your own brassicas. Eating fresh or frozen for later, your guests will insist on more. Super Sly Fox 1 said, your brassicas are always amazing. I guess that makes me an expert. Follow these processes and let me know how they turn out in your own gardens. Send questions and pictures to strawheadvideo at gmail.com. I thank y'all very much for watching. This is Grow Me Something Mister. And you should uh, remember to what? Hmm, no, I don't have an exit line yet, so see you later, everybody.